everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do your first Sibelius intro tutorial. I've been seeing a lot of really cool tutorial styles on YouTube and uh, my favorite is what's called a walkthrough, talk through kind of tutorial. So it's a longer form style tutorial where we just cover a lot of topics and I talk through pretty much everything that I'm doing. So this tutorial is going to be for anyone that's just starting out with Sibelius and they just need to get these quick skills. I am assuming that you are a musician and that's who I'm directing this tutorial for. So before we get started, I want to ask that you please subscribe and also like this video and comment below if you want me to cover anything else that you didn't see covered in this video. Woo! All right, let's get to it. So this is going to work for any version of Sibelius, seven or higher. I had to cross grade because my other computer died and it just would not run on this OS. So let's open up Sibelius by just clicking it, clicking the icon. All right, so once we get through that cute little song, uh, you're gonna have this quick start menu and from here you can choose all these from all these different templates and you can also create your own i'll link a video for my old tutorial on how to create your own template let's just go ahead and say we don't have our template here and let's just click blank boop and just a single click that will do and let's expand this window a little bit let's so letter is the document set up here so that means that it will just appear like a normal piece of paper in the printer uh, sometimes I like to do landscape for scores, but for parts, I like to just keep everything portrait. We can change that later in the document. House style, uh, this is if you want to have a funky font or some different type of style going through your score. You know, if you want the font to look different, you want the notes to look like jazzy, you could choose jazz ink pen or all these jazz ones or handwritten. Uh, which is kind of cool, but we're just gonna do unchanged because it's basic and it's very readable. And that's what is the most important thing for me when I'm putting together a score. Okay, so right here, let's change instruments. Um, and today let's just start, I'm gonna start by doing a little, um, let's do a woodwind quintet, let's, that's kind of fun. So let's see, what's in a woodwind quintet? We've got the flute. Oh yeah, let's, let's get these like really funky instruments in here. This will be really fun. All right, double contrabass flute. And then we got oboe. Let's see. Oh, let's do bass oboe. <laughs> yeah. Add that to score. You just click add to score to get them. Okay. Um, clarinet. Okay. Let's see if there's like a sub. Con Wait. Okay. There's got to be contra bass clarinet in B flat. Yeah. Let's in bass. Clarinet. I've actually never done these options before, so this is just gonna be really fun to go through. So we're just we're just choosing uh, the instruments for our score, and I'm just choosing kind of vanity instruments for fun. <laughs> right now. Okay, so then let's do French horn. Let's see what we've got. Nope, okay. And Sibelius doesn't use the word French horn. It uses horn in whatever key, which is the correct thing to do, but for, and we'll just do horn and F. So boring. Oh my goodness. Click add to score. Then let's do bassoon. Let's do a good old contrabass. What the heck? A quart bassoon? Okay. Whatever. Contrabassoon. And then now that we have all of our quintet in here, Let's go ahead and click OK. And then over here, let's choose our time signature. Um, let's just make it a basic, like 4-4. Four, four. And you can also select other here. And uh, in this dialog menu, you can choose, let's say, let's do, let's do a complex meter real quick, because this is important to know. Let's do like uh, 7, 8, and uh, a beam and rest group. So like in, in these compound meters, you can have like eighth notes grouped together in a certain way. And you can adjust like what they're automatically gonna be uh, in this dialogue. So you can select three, two, two. So it'll be like in each bar, it'll be three eighth notes grouped together and then a group of two eighth notes and another group of two eighth notes. And so you add two plus two plus three, you get seven. Uh, and Shoot, why don't we just do this whole thing in 7 8? That'll be fun. Yeah, so let's make it um, 2 3 2 so that we have two eighth notes at the start and then three a group of three eighth notes and then another group of two. Boom. Okay, and that'll be fun. Separate tuplets from adjacent notes. Yes, we want that. We want the beaming to be separate. 
All right, fun. And then we can choose to start with a pickup bar. Let's do it, why not? And let's just do a, an eighth note. Oh, nope, okay. If it, if it gives you that, just delete. If it like adds them, um, let's just do a eighth note there. Tempo text, wild, but reserved. <laughs> That's just fun. You can enter any kind of text here. You could also select from the drop down all these um, typical tempo texts, and they will, when you play back in your piece, it will go to that. And then let's do a metronome mark of quarter note, or let's, let's do eighth note equals 100. Yay. And key signature, let's do something easy. You can choose from major sharp keys, minor sharp keys, minor flat keys, etc. here. We can also select no key signature. And I'm gonna do C major. Then we're gonna do, let's then let's make a title of our piece. Um, uh, Sibelius Toot. <laughs> okay, that'll be fun. And then I'm gonna input my name here. Oh my goodness, can I type? The answer is no. And then you can choose your copyright. Horn Hippie. 2020. It's always important to put a copyright on your music, especially if you're making it, um, and also your arrangements too. Now let's have all the document is set up and we're going to click create. Yay. All right. Now it's full screen. This is bad boy. There we go. <laughs> Man, this is ridiculous. So you can see our piece only has one, two, three, four, five bars. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do command B shortcut there and just hit command B a bunch of times to add a lot of bars. If you want to input the bars more specifically uh, in this whole setup up here in the home tab, that's another thing I'm going to actually let's let's unfull screen because we're going to need to like see all these options. Um, and I'm just going to make the window really big. And so up here we have the ribbon and the tab. So like these um, this whole thing up here is called a ribbon and each one of these sections is called a tab. So we have the text tab, notations tab, note input tab, home tab, file tab, etc., etc. And you'll find all of the things that you need to do uh, up here. And Sibelius is a really interesting piece of software because there is just so many things that you have to be able to do in order to uh, write music and the more music that you write and the more complex your music gets the more amount of things that you need so uh, generally it, you can find anything here in the ribbons or with plugins that you can download from the world wide web and i know sibelius ultimate comes down with like a lot of uh, a lot of plugins for for you just off the bat and uh that's what I'd recommend if you're just now going to buy a piece of music writing software. I recommend to purchase Sibelius. And I also recommend if you're working on a laptop to get a keypad or a keyboard like this with the number pad. Or just you can get just the number pad online. Because that's just, uh, it's super, super important because this little, this little guy here, um, this keypad is how you're going to be inputting the notes and how you're going to be inputting them quickly. And something that I've learned is that if you use a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller, it helps your workflow intensely, especially if you're inputting like a lot of little small notes, uh, which I have been doing for a couple projects. Anyway, so that's just kind of the lay of the land here. Let's go ahead and uh, just type out some notes. So on my keypad, I'm going to hit the number three, and that's going to prime everything to write in eighth notes. So now let's just, in the double contrabass flute, let's just, oh my goodness, this is gonna be fun. Um, I'm just gonna input notes here um, on my keyboard, uh, not my MIDI keyboard, but on my keypad with um, like the alphabet, alphabetically I'm inputting the notes. So I'm just typing the, the note name. So like A, an A will get you this, a B will get you this, C, D, E, F, and the th if you want to jump to an interval, like say I want to go down an octave on the next note for the F, and I also have this slur going here because I accidentally pressed the letter S on the keyboard. So <laughs> that went to there, um, and that'll create a slur. But for now, okay, so note input. Basic note input is what we're working on right now. So I want my next note to be an F an octave down. So I'm gonna type an F, and then I'm going to hold command and click the down arrow key. 
and then it goes to the octave below. And that's a cool way to kind of skip around if you're not using a MIDI keyboard. Um, if you're going of an interval of like a fifth, it'll go to like the closest octave, and sometimes that's not where the note needs to go, you know? Like when you're writing music, you sometimes have to jump a sixth, so you're gonna have to be able to utilize that. So let's go, okay, let's, A, let's, I wanna go up an octave. Oh wait, I wanna go up another octave. So command, holding command on the Mac, and I'm sure it's like another like control or whatever on the PC, and the up arrow key. Okay, that's as high as I know go, okay. That was just me holding command and pressing up, uh, and that'll get your, your octave key to go. Okay. So then we have, uh, and you can see our grouping here that we entered in that uh, first dialog box is uh, going through here with our two eighth notes here, and then our three eighth notes, and then our two eighth notes, et cetera, et cetera. And that's gonna happen throughout the entire uh, piece. So we have that basic input and I'm just, um, and here I was just using the mouse for that, but that's not a quick way to do it. I wanna teach you guys the quick way. So I am going to, on my keypad, select four and a dot. And you can see over here it um, selected both of those notes. And so we're gonna have another A. Oh, God dang it, I hit the S button again. So that's why we got that. Okay, there. And so what were to happen if I just press this note again? and it would give me the value of that note and tie it into the next bar. So there's a difference here in uh, what we, like a slur and a tie. So right here, these two notes are tied together, which in Sibelius and in music in general means that you do not re-articulate this note. You uh, simply hold the, this note out for the entire value of this tie. Um, whereas we also, in this in Sibelius, you can also write a slur uh, and a really easy way to do this is by just pressing S. And so then we have this little slur that appears. And if you want it to go over more notes, you simply press the space bar. Yay, and then we're all slurred. And then you uh, deselect it by clicking elsewhere or uh, what I like to do sometimes is just to hit shift and then over. And then it will, you know, you can kind of select and like get out of it like by unselecting shift and then hitting the right arrow key. And that's just a way to navigate out if you don't want to like have your mouse and like be clicking anywhere and to deselect in order to keep continue working. And let's say you wanted to input a chord. So these are all wind instruments, so chords are unusual. And also the score order looks a little bit funky. I wanna, when I read wood, woodwind quintets, I like the horn to be above the bassoon. So let's actually see if we can, um, let's, let's change this up. So to have the horn above the contrabassoon. And so in uh, the home tab, in this ribbon here, we're going to go to add or remove instruments. And I think this is a way that we can do this. So you go to add or remove instruments here, and then you select the instrument that you wanna move. And we're just gonna move it down, easy. And now the contrabassoon is gonna be below the horn. Boom, nailed it. <laughs> okay, and I, let's see. This grouping, this weird grouping here, I don't, I don't love that. So let's see if we can just quickly figure out how to remove that. Um, oh, or maybe you could just select it and delete it. Oh my goodness! Okay, so that's a, something that I literally just learned uh, making this tutorial for you guys. So um, you just, sometimes you can just select it and delete it. Okay, now let's say, um, and this is my friend Mary actually had this question. Uh, let's say you want to change the name of an instrument, but you want it to sound like a bass oboe. Because um, if you wanted to change the instrument itself, you would go up to this change icon, but this is something that's really helpful. If you want to edit any text in Sibelius, all you have to do is double click. Double click the text and it will, uh, this little cursor will appear here and you can um, just go through and um, I want to I want to just capitalize it bass oboe and then put a an exclamation point there <laughs> and then uh, you can also do that with the abbreviated versions of that on the other sides of the score so by simply double clicking meow and then uh, I'm gonna add an exclamation point there oh it's so fun and I what's that what this is really useful for is if you're doing ensembles in Sibelius that have like a lot of the same instrument because it'll just put like horn, 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 and it won't automatically do like horn one, horn two, horn, horn three, et cetera, et cetera. And so over here on the, f the first start of the score, you have to do, you know, double click, 
and then at the end you could do like one and you can like add the Arabic numeral there um, just by typing it out and then you go down the line do one two three four etc and then on the abbreviated versions you do the same thing and when you do that on the abbreviated version you can see your changes are made throughout the entire score so if I did like you know base oboe two and it was just b dot ob two dot exclamation point two that would continue out throughout the rest of the score okay and also similarly you can edit all these other text options here boom let's say that we wanted to change our tempo a little bit and we wanted it to re we wanted it to go like you know we wanted it one click faster <laughs> or 10 clicks or whatever let's do 10 so what you would do in this dialogue we would go uh you double click that text the tempo text and then delete and then type 110 that easy and then um Another important thing to do when you just start a document, you want to be able to play back. Uh, and so we're gonna go over to this view tab and over here in the this panels, we're going to select transport. And then this little transport window shows up. I need to research how to get like my settings to just have this automatically. And I'll post a video on that later. Um, that's just like, I need to take a little bit of a deeper dive in order to learn that. But this transport, window or this transport panel is super important because it'll help you navigate through the piece and you can see it also has our tempo um here at 110 already so let's just kind of see what we got um you'll notice that i have this bar highlighted on the base oboe part and let's watch what happens when i press play so it's only playing that part and press spacebar to stop and then let's go back to the beginning uh, by dragging this little um slider or you can also just press that uh, back button. And now let's deselect that bar and then it'll play the whole thing when we select play. Ooh, funky, love it. <laughs> and, that, and then press space bar to stop. That is just a super fun way. <laughs> I actually like using the transport to kind of, um, it's a good way to help check your arrangement as you go through to make sure you're not like missing anything or like dynamics are good. Um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about adding dynamics. Yeah, this tutorial is just like all over the place, but it's a fun way to learn, um, I think so. So in order to input a dynamic marking um, on the Mac, you do command, hold command and select E or command E, just type command E. Blah. And then you have this little cursor will appear underneath your um, your notes and then you also have to you have to hold command while you either enter like forte piano um, or mezzo piano and you just have to hold command while you're typing out all those dynamic markings so that the type or like the font will be correct um, and just because like if I didn't hold command and did, I did that it would do like this so you can see it's just like not the it's not uh, like doing a an expression font um, and so like those won't even register to Sibelius so it's important to keep that. Let's make it, um, let's do just do a forte piano, boom. Then same here, forte piano, boom. Oh, one thing also real quick. Um, so a uh, tip, if you wanted to change this eighth note here to a quarter note, let's say, so you just uh, double click to highlight the text, delete. And then what I like to do, I can never remember the shortcuts for these notes. Uh, they do exist, but you gotta learn them and I don't know. So. Uh, just right click and you see all these other options that appear. And so then we just select oh, 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 the quarter note. Okay, command four, I can remember that. Um, and okay, now I see a command eight. Nope, oh, okay, that is not what an eighth note is. Command three, okay, that's fun. Um, anywho, so that's how you change that, uh, the note value. Okay, no, we're gonna go back to that. We're gonna delete the quarter note. We're just, just gonna go back to normal. All right, so here we have, um, I'm just gonna input a couple notes. I'm just random uh, click. You can, you can input notes by clicking in the staff uh, with uh, your um, note value loaded over here on this side. And I'm just gonna, oh, nope. We're not gonna do that. And some people, uh, it's the sl that's the slowest way to like click notes to input. Okay, so a quick way to make a chord happen in Sibelius is to um, hold the shift key and select like a fourth, third, you know, and whenever you hold the shift and you type um, a, a number out, it will uh, put that note uh, in the chord, whatever value below the lowest note that is selected. 
So, you know, if I do a knife, whoa, there we go. <laughs> so to undo anything in Sibelius, all you have to do is hit Command Z on the Mac and whatever the equivalent is on uh, PC, which I think is Control. Uh, anyway, you wanna see the score transposing. You just go to the Home tab and select Transposing Score, and then it'll put in the key signatures for your parts. So let's say you wanted to edit a part a little bit. Underneath all these ribbons in this kind of blank space here, you would uh, right click and you see this like drop down menu come, uh, coming around here and you can just select whichever part you wanna view. And so it'll, so at least it'll automatically generate parts for you um, and they just appear like this and you can kind of edit them here. Um, but the best thing to do is to edit the score first and get the score completely done and then go to editing the parts individually. And to clear them out, you just do that. If your parts are just like heinous, you can always go to the parts tab and uh, select delete part and just select them all. Uh, come on, and then, boop, okay. Yes, delete the parts. And then you just select this new part and it will create a set of new parts for you that usually fixes some errors. Uh, if you have like a lot of random formatting issues with your parts, it's something helpful that I figured out. Okay. <sighs> So I'm just gonna go through these ribbons and let's just kind of talk about the important stuff. <laughs> so let's say you wanted to paste, um, of it, like of a copy paste feature is something that's really good to use, um, especially when you wanna put like a cue into a part. And in music, uh, sheet music, a cue is just uh, another part that you're not supposed to play in the part, but like you wanna be able to see it in your part. So let's just select this um, flute part and then you can select the bar by just clicking anywhere that's not on a direct note in the bar to hide the bar and then I'm going to do command C and then I'm going to select the bar that I want the cue to appear in and then I'm going to go up to the home tab and in the home ribbon just uh, in the paste drop down not you don't just click that you got to click the or wait, can you yeah because if you just paste it'll just directly you know paste exactly what it is into that part um, and you can also do that pressing Command V, uh, but let's Command Z to undo that. And instead, we're going to select Paste as Q. And you can see it's like all the way down here. And a little trick that I like to do, it's just kind of, you know, you can displace the octave and then um, you can write uh, 8VB. And how you do that is going to um, Command T to just input random score text that doesn't have anything to do. And so you just do, uh, and I'm gonna do parentheses, um, 8VB. And that'll appear in the part like around that cue. And let's just kind of slide that above so that we can see it there. And then when we go to the horn part, you'll see that it has this abbreviated AVB and then double, whatever. <laughs> oh gosh, that, that is a mess of an instrument name, huh? And um, even though that's not technically correct, it's like, well, I see. 17, 16B? No, no, no. It would be 15, 15 VB, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, like the double octave down. <laughs> okay, let's X out of this. Um, you can also just like select the full score and go. it'll go back. You don't have to like X out of every part to get back to here. Um, one more thing, let's see. If you want to delete bars, um, just because they're superfluous bars and they're not required, just, um, holding shift, like so you select the bar, like the first bar, and then you make a selection by holding shift and selecting the bottom of the score and like the last bar that you wanna delete. And then to completely delete them from the score, you hold command delete. And uh, do you wanna delete these bars from the score? Yes, and I like to keep, I don't, I don't wanna push that button because I like having a little bit of a warning dialogue to like make sure like the, are you sure? You know, it's important, I think, to keep that. Uh, let's see, so we've covered dynamics, we've covered uh, some tempo text, uh, we've covered how to edit text, and um, like, you can, like you can adjust the appearance of your score a lot through these options, which I'll have to go through in another video, and tab, like, let's get into guitar parts and tab fingerings, oh, that is crazy. Uh, but it's a lot of fun to work with. It, tabs take the longest, I think. Like composers, like leave me a comment on how long it's taken you to input guitar tabs <laughs> into these like pieces. They they are the worst. 
And don't even get me started on working with capos. Ugh. <laughs> Um, and so in this play option, uh, I haven't experimented around a whole lot with like the live tempo, but you can like essentially press the space bar to conduct through the piece. But I've heard from a lot of people online that it's just endlessly frustrating to work with. So I have been reticent to, um, to use that. Let's say we want to put a rehearsal mark. Uh, rehearsal marks are really good, especially for longer pieces. You can do that by um, just in the text tab, you can select this button and just do and it'll automatically do an alphabetical uh, rehearsal mark. You can um, also like adjust the options. Like say you wanted to like restart a sequence for another movement. Uh, it's always just worth it. You can just like, um, and command R is how you do that. That's the shortcut for that to like, you know, let's do another one here. Command R, rehearsal mark. Um, and let's say I wanted to have big numbers instead of, oops, wanted to have big numbers instead of big letters. So then we would go to uh, this drop down here, this little tiny um, purple square with an arrow shooting out the bottom. And then you can select what you, you'd like here. You can have it be like a big bar number, which is really good. I see that in a lot of band music, uh, super helpful especially if you have bar numbers just kind of throughout, like, which I also like in my arrangements. So let's do big numbers though. And then click okay, and then it's that. And let's do another rehearsal mark here and let me show you how, how to restart a sequence. And that's just uh, to restart sequence. And then, okay, restart sequence. And then let's start at one. Cause like some, I think you, you do have to um, input that for it to redo. And then it'll give it to you on the next bar. And so what we can do is we can delete this one. So selecting it, delete, and then drag this one over. That's a way to kind of fix that. Um, if you wanted to uh, like reposition the rehearsal marks in any way. And let's talk about doing multi-movement uh, pieces because this is something that like when I first started doing tutorials like for the Sibelius, you know, I just started making tutorials for myself to um, like to not forget how to do certain things, but I've also picked up some really cool, uh, helpful hints uh, along the way. So let's say we wanted to do like a multi-movement work. You just add your bars and let's pick your place, pick the place that you want to stop. And then you go over to the notations tab and you select bar line final. And then um, for, this is where we get into like beginner formatting in Sibelius. So then you go to the layout tab and do a page break. And then like with that bar selected, go ahead and hit command I or uh, right click on it and oh, shift command I, shift command I to open in the inspector dialog over here. And so usually like with that bar line selected or the bar, the bar itself, that's it. So you select the bar that you want, like the end, and then you select this little button here, section end. And then it will like restart the score. So you can then put like a second movement or have like a couple pieces on one similar document. And then you would go over to the text uh, tab and then just basically you using any of these and you just click this drop down, it'll come up with all these and like we'll do movement two. And then you can also adjust, you can like change, um, and this is also this is also applies to in the middle of a work. We're gonna talk about changing uh, time signatures and key signatures. Uh, so let's just, let's go back, let's backtrack to like this, um, this other movement that we got. So if you wanna change the key signature in the middle of a piece, you select the bar that you want the key change to occur after, and then you select the new key. Oh no, okay. All right, it does it in the bar. On some of these things, it's a little, it's a little finicky. Um, and then you just select whatever key. And if you go down here to the more options tab, it'll also uh, give you the option to um, hide a cautionary, uh, which is useful for doing like things on a different page. And if you wanna make the score look really clean, um, but you can just tap the tap K on your keyboard to open the key change dialog. And then you select key, boom, D major. And so you can see it like changes it back after one bar and an easy way to make that not happen is just to click on the key signature in the next bar and just delete. And then the same thing, it also created a double bar line, which I don't want there. So I'm just gonna select that bar line and then delete, easy. 
And if you wanted to change the time signature in the middle of a piece, this is how you do it. You just select, uh, select the bar that you want the time change to occur after, I think, and then <laughs> select T and then, okay, no, it's during. <laughs> <laughs> Again. All right. Select the bar that you want the chime change to occur in, and then you select the new time signature. And then you just like reef, you know, you clean it up like by deleting um, the excess time signature that it'll go back to. If you want that to not happen, let's try this again. Um, you go, you select T, and then you go to more options, and um, then like go to 6 8 and do allow cautionary. We have bars up to next time. Should, okay. That's weird. I don't know how to correct that so that it doesn't do that. I think it's like in that tab, but um, it's that's just an easy like two clicks way to do it. And then you have all these different time signature changes. So let's say you want the next movement of your piece to be in a different time signature. So let's go to the next movement, boom, and then select T for time signature, or not, don't select it, hit the T key. Working on my terminology, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting there. And let's just put this into comment, or no. Since it's a new movement, it's going to, and every time that you like do a key signature on a different page, it automatically will, um, a different time signature, it'll automatically like do this cautionary one on the previous page, which we do not want um, because it's gonna be a new movement. You're gonna pause in between. So we wanna deselect the allow cautionary and uh, then change it to uh, four four. And then we click okay. Boom, and so if there, if I didn't select that, there would be like a little 4-4 four, four bar here and it would look really messy. Uh, and then let's delete that, boom. And then we have this here. Uh, back in the text tab, let's set up a different tempo. So uh, let's, and we can also choose from uh, the uh, standard options in Sibelius by right clicking and then, ooh, prestissimo. And then, uh, let's do a space, right click again to do the eighth note, e and then equal sign. And then I'm going to type uh, 96. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Okay, what? Um, and that's, that's important to do to just uh, set up your next movement if you have multi-movement work. It's important to have a new tempo and a new key signature, new time signature. Make sure you take care of all those things. And to like, if even if it's the same, uh, it's important to maybe like redo them there and to have them appear like just to set it up. Okay, we can also exit out of that um, inspector window or dialogue, whatever. Um, let's see. So we've gone through kind of like the basic text. We've gone through uh, basic notations. You oh, clef changes. It is important for horn players. Is select the bar that you want. Um, the new clef change to be in, and then you uh, hit the Q button, and then it'll give you all these different options. And you can do tabs and things like that, and treble up 15, et cetera, et cetera, 15, that's what it is, okay. Nailed it earlier, call back, uh, let's go to alto clef. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like such a nerd with this stuff. This is like not comedy, <laughs> like, because horns we never read in, like why would we ever read in that? It's so silly. Okay, but that's that's basically what you do if you wanted to do something like that. This is all just to help out. Um, another thing, if you wanted, let's let's talk a little bit about like the main uh, lines up here. And so like Sibelius calls these markings lines. And so if you open this dialog, you can find like crescendos, glissandi, trills, octave up indications, dash slurs, diminuendo, crescendo, aniente, um, which if you do put this in your, uh, if you use these niente crescendo di diminuendos, it will uh, register in the software when you play it back as a, you know, diminuendo, aniente, so like tune, which means to nothing. Um, so it'll get super duper 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 pooper quiet. And, um, Hauptstimme, Nebenstimme, all these kind of fun little things. That This is the dialogue that you can find those in. And uh, a fun way to input them is to select the notes that you want them to occur over. If you want them, if you, like you select a bar, and then let's, I want, I want it to start on this B in the flute. So I'm gonna sh hit the shift button and then click, and then it will select all of those notes. Then let's open this dialogue. Um, and you can also do this by pressing L. And let's do a crescendo from nothing. And then it'll appear like that. But let's open up the part and see what it looks like.
Oh, or okay, it is. All right. Well, I mean, that's a cool way to notate that then. Um, and that will signify to start from nothing and go up. <laughs> this piece is getting wild. Okay, that's not something that a flute player would actually uh, be able to do. Um, I mean, it's just, it just is bad writing on my part. So let's fix that to go to a regular crescendo. And uh, that's how we did that just now. And let's see, um, let's go to a couple more in note input things. So you can see here on the keypad and like navigating on the keypad, you see these buttons here on the side. And if you have a keypad, it'll be like the plus and the minus button. And just hitting those buttons will take you to the other um, sides. And like uh, the big thing about Sibelius is just kind of getting used to all the shortcuts and you get better the more that you do them. So just like get in the studio and just start making these things happen. Just start start doing projects. Start doing projects and you'll get quicker and quicker and better and better at Sibelius. And you'll get quicker like the more you do it. Um, kind of like with anything, any skill. Uh, and so yeah, you, and you just with all the uh, notes here, you can input them that way. Um, and then all these roles, these are useful. This little dialogue here uh, is useful for percussionists and um, tremolos, things like that. The next one you got fermatas, you got like more uh, like different articulations. And it's also good to, in your workflow, um, to kind of organize it in a way so that you're not like flipping through all these things and like inputting like a quarter note with a staccato mark and then like a, a dynamic marking. It's good to kind of separate all that out and like do note input first. That's what I like to do. And then uh, once you're doing that, I, then I go back and do articulations. And then after I do articulations, then I do dynamics and make them consistent because it's so easy to lose track when you're editing something or arranging something, like what is going on? You know, like I, I don't know, am I, should I, did I enter that forte there? Did I enter it there? No, and if you keep them all kind of those, ed, those same types of edits um, together, it makes it a lot easier to go through. And it just, it just makes your whole process quicker and you won't be like spending time looking through and editing stuff. Um, another cool thing, like before we leave the notations ribbon, um, let's just kind of look through this. This is a, uh, like the symbol. Um, oh my goodness, there's so many funky symbols that I haven't even really explored. Lots of percussion, lots of jazz articulations and fret systems here. Um, ooh, accordion tabs or accordion stuff. Do not photocopy markings, just kind of all the stuff. Oh, funky. Funky clefts for modern music, really intense. Okay, wow. Um, and wow, that is, that is funky, love it. Okay, and then another thing, this is a useful tool for percussionists. So you wanna uh, change the note type, the note head type for like a, uh, some kind of symbol, like a closed symbol or a hit or something. And you would just uh, select any of these. And this is also, these large stemless slashes are uh, what I use for writing out comping parts for jazz instruments. And I'll just, I'll, there'll be another tutorial on that specifically later. Uh, but you would just like select that and it gives you this like stemless um, cool note head and you can drag it wherever just by uh, clicking and dragging. Uh, let's do Command Z twice to get back to where we were. And oh, an educational tool here, add note names. So that's a fun thing if you just select that. Um, It'll just change it to that, which is so fun. Uh, and this is good. And uh, like, if you wanted to like make a worksheet for your students, you would do uh, that, but you would also go to um, layout and you would want to make the notes like huge. So I think you would edit that in the house style or oh, no, you'd actually edit it in the, sta the staff size. And you could just like increase that by pressing this up arrow or selecting this box and typing a different value into it. And then you just go and then it's it's huge and it's very readable so but normal staff size is seven millimeters so we're just gonna go back to that and another thing like in Sibelius when you're editing um, like you'll find like sometimes things that like collide and so like things get a little messy and you can kind of adjust that just I'll give you a hint just pressing the top oh my god <laughs> Toggling off magnetic layout is something that uh, can be very useful. And also making system and page breaks uh, for parts. If there's like a weird, like it's just the parts are not breaking apart at like multi rests, 
you can use this um, and you can, oh gosh, the make into system and make into page, these buttons are great. Uh, if you like select a full passage that you want to appear on one part or one page, that's an easy way to uh, fix uh, page turn errors. And then appearance, um, you can explore all of these like engraving rules, note spacing rules, reset note spacing. This is if you have, uh, it, and I also I always like to um, kind of go to the engraving rules and, uh, or wait, actually no, it's in note spacing rules. This is, yeah, I click on note spacing rules and then before accidentals, I like to give a little bit more space because Sibelius like really crams them together. So I like to have like at least, you know, 0.3 spaces before, or um, like or before accidentals especially. And uh, around note heads, I like about like, mm, let's do like two spaces, 0.2 spaces. And then, but before, but it won't like, it won't apply that until you command all to select the entire score and then reset note spacing. Just click that and it'll kind of move everything over to where, to match your note spacing rules. Yes. All right. And then we covered some parts. Uh, I don't really use this at all uh, because I do not uh, use this software for teaching. Yeah. And let's, let's kind of just finish on the view. Uh, one really helpful thing to do when you're uh, composing a score is to go uh, select this panorama view and it gets everything on one page. It's not the best thing for formatting uh, score, but it is very good for just inputting and having everything really clear and, and like, you know, in a very seeable space to get everything on the same, you know. <laughs> it's just good to have it all like in front of you and to be able to see as much of the score at one time without like scrolling through like weird page breaks and stuff like that. Okay, I think that is, oh yeah, let's cover one last thing. So say you're done with your score and you wanna export the parts. So you just come over here, make sure you save always Let's do that real quick. All right, save as Sibelius Toot. I'll just do it to the desktop. Boom. Then go back to file. Okay, we want to export. We want to create parts. Another thing, like, well, I'll cover a lot. Of, I need to do another tutorial, but this one's getting, like, super long. So I'm going to wrap it up. In this option, you can, like, export a MIDI if you wanted to make, like, a click track or something. Or you can do, um, like... Uh, you can do manuscript paper, you could do a video where it will like render out all of the sound and the music and so you can uh, share it with people that you want to like play this music with so that they get an idea of what's going on. Uh, you can do the video or you could do the audio only, um, but we want to export the parts. So you go to PDF and I like to just keep them all together. So I like to do export the score in parts. Um, Sibelius Toot. And just do make a file name, select where you want to save it, and then click export, and it'll export it. And that wraps up our tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. I'm the Horn Hippie, aka JT. See you guys. <laughs> Bye.